Hey guys, this is Tim O'Neill from the Norvice Fly Tying System. And in this video, we're going to show you three disciplines that we use when fly tying all the time, especially if you tie a lot of trout flies. We're going to show how we dub on the Norvice, how we can tie in peacock curl and make it much more stronger than the standard way of tying it. We're also going to tie in a hackle and we're going to show you how to strengthen that as well. So let's get started. I've got a size 10, just a, a standard straight shanked hook and we're going to put this in our standard jaws and remember with the Norvice you always want to have your hook shank level and even with the top of your jaws and that sets us on our zero axis rotation let me get a look here And let me drop that down just a little bit. There we go. It's close enough for what we're doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie off my thread and I'm going to lay down a thread base. Now typically with your standard static hook vise, you would tie on at the eye of the shank of the hook and you would wrap this bobbin over top of the shank laying consecutive wraps almost touching each other to get from the front of the hook shank to the point just over the barb. With the Norvice we do things a little differently. Being able to rotate the hook on a center axis of rotation we can hold the bobbin still and we can spin the vise and we can rotate the thread on and I can go up and down and up and down and lay down however much of a thread base that I want to. That's one of the benefits of being able to rotate or spin the hook as opposed to the hook being static and using your hand to wrap over the, um, the shank. Now the second part of the system is the, the, the thread post that's over here to my right and in between tying steps you can take your bobbin and you can lay it onto the thread post and that creates this um, thread from the shank of the hook over to the the thread post and and this is basically level so when we dub on the Norvice we do it a little bit differently now I'm using a product that is Senyo's laser dubbing for this um, for this demonstration but this will work with any dubbing it will work with any synthetic dubbing it will work with natural dubbings Hair's ear number one, muskrat, any any time that you're that you're dubbing onto the shank of the hook, this will work. Now, with this thread being level, over here on this side, it, you can't see it because it's on my side of the vise, we have a rubber grommet. And that pinches the thread and it doesn't allow it to spin back here. So as we're spinning the vise on this end, this thread is cording itself or it's it's spinning and it's getting tighter. So, when we go to dub on the vise, you tease your dubbing out, okay? You activate the rotary function of the vise, you spin the vise, touch the dubbing to the thread, and it will jump right out of my fingers and right up onto the shank of the hook. So now, if I want to tighten that up, I can pinch this right here, and I can spin the vise, and you'll see what happens right in this area. it will tighten that dubbing up so I can do a very loose and buggy type of body if I want. If I'm doing a dry fly I can do a very tight pack body and that just it, it's dependent on how tight I cord this thread up after I put the dubbing on. Now I'm not going to let go of this here. I'm going to reach underneath and I'm going to take my my bobbin off the cradle and I'm going to work my way to the back of the fly without cutting my thread and now I'm going to start wrapping this dubbing onto the fly. And you can see I've kind of pre-built the taper into the dubbing noodle. So if you do this right, you can wind up with a very easy, very nice tapered body onto your fly. And that's one of the ways that, or that is the way that we dub on Norvice. Now I'm just going to throw a quick half hitch in here. My next material is one of my favorite materials for tying trout flies. Basically every trout pattern that I tie 
has this material in it, which is peacock curl. It's a great, great material. I love this stuff. I've, I've tried all the synthetics and, and the dubbings and, and the different things that they try to make look like this stuff, and it just doesn't work. When, when this stuff gets wet, it changes colors. It, it, it kind of has a, a maroonish to a goldish kind of tint to it. There's, there's just nothing that, that will do what peacock curl does. The challenge with peacock curl, as you all know, this is not a very durable material, especially out here at the tips. It gets very dry and brittle, and it breaks off very, very easily. So we've developed a way using the vise that we can use this material, and we can reinforce it, and we can make it much, much more durable than right out of the pack. So I've married, I've got... Uh, four or five hurls here. I've married them up, and I've I've clipped I clipped about an inch or so off of the uh, the end of of the hurls. Now I'm going to tie these in. Right there, and I'm going to throw a half hitch into the pattern. Every time that you go onto the cradle, you want to throw a half hitch in. Now with your conventional static hooked fly tying, you would take this material and you would hand over hand wrap it until you worked your way up and filled the area of the hook that, that you wanted to, to use, which is fine. That's the way that, that we've done it for years and, and that, that, that will work fine. But with the vise and, and with the things that we can do with the vise, I'm going to show you a better way to do it. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take these hurls, I'm going to lay them out over the front of the, of the, the hook eye. Now you can see I've got my chartreuse thread here and I'm using chartreuse thread for obviously for demo purposes so you can see the thread but I've got my thread here and I've got my peacock curl here on top now what I'm going to do I'm going to spin the vise and then watch what's going to happen right in this area right here okay now see what that did that took all five of those peacock curls and it twisted them together but it also twisted the thread around the hurl so now I've made, for lack of a better term, a, a peacock hurl chenille, if you will. But I've got the, the, the hurls are twisted and the thread is twisted around, so it makes it much, much more durable than just wrapping these around the shank of the hook. Now, again, I'm not going to let go here. I'm going to come underneath, and I'm going to take my bobbin off the cradle, and I'm going to rotate the vise, and I'm going to put my peacock hurl thorax on my fly. Now... You can see I've got a bit of extra material here, and the way that we deal with that, I'm just going to treat it like a dubbing loop. I'm going to pinch it down here in the middle, and I'm going to come up, and I'm going to do three wraps in front, three wraps behind, and then I'm going to come here, and I'm going to just clip this off. Okay, this goes down in my Norvice waist pin, which is positioned right in front of the vise. And now I've got a nice thorax that, that I've used for peacock curl. I can take this, this bodkin, I can poke it, I can, I can scrape it, I can rub on it. Even if I break one of those hurls, it's not going to unwind because it has the, the thread wrapped around it and it's lashed down tight to the shank of the hook. For Prince Nymphs, for Copper Johns, for any... any um, pattern that uses peacock curl this is a fantastic way to tie it in and it is much much more durable than the the standard way that that we used to do it okay for the next material that i'm going to use is i've got just a standard grizzly hackle now this this will work if you're tying a wet fly it'll work for a wet fly collar it will work for dry fly hackle it will work for any any hackle that you're tying on. So I'm prepping this feather by stripping a bunch of the stuff off the bottom that I don't want to use. I'm going to clip it off, clip the stem off, and then I'm going to tie the stem onto the shank of the hook. I'm going to go onto my cradle, so we put a half hitch in it. Okay. Now, if you're fishing a hurl body fly, and the peacock hurl breaks and one of the strands starts to unwind, you can continue to fish it. It'll still catch fish. Or you can cut that hurl off and, and you know continue to fish with the fly. If you're fishing with a hackle and the hackle stem breaks and the hackle starts unwinding, 
at that point, the fly is no good and you are going to have to clip off and, um, and, and retie a new fly. So I'm going to show you a way to, to tie a hackle on that's going to be considerably stronger and much more durable than the standard way of just hand over hand wrapping the hackle. So very similar to what we did with the peacock curl, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay this hackle out in the front. So I've got my chartreuse thread and I've got my hackle on here. I'm going to spin the vise and then watch what's going to happen right in this area right here. Okay, see what that did? That took the stem of the feather and it has wrapped the thread around the stem several, several times. So now not only do I have the stem of the feather that's going to be holding my hackle on, I have thread wrapped around the center of it so it makes it much, much stronger. So again, I'm not going to let go here. I'm going to keep this pinch, so I'm pinching the hackle and the, um, and the thread together. I'm going to come underneath and I'm going to wrap and put about four wraps of hackle on here and we can stroke them back if we need to. One more on. That looks good. Now, I've got a little bit, you can see I've got some extra hackle down here. So I'm going to treat it like a dubbing loop, just like we did before. And I'm going to put three in front. Three in back. Okay, and now I need to get this out. I don't want to come in here and I don't want to clip this with my scissors because I don't want to clip any of these hackle tips off that we want to leave on the fly. So I'm going to leave my scissors open. I'm going to pull up with, with this excess section of uh, feather and I'm just going to saw this. So I'm just going to slide my scissors back and forth and I'm going to saw this off. And that way I can get my feather and, and my thread extra piece off and I haven't damaged any of, of my hackle tips or I haven't cut them off. So now we're just getting ready to finish this and you're looking at it and this looks kind of like a bad hair day and I understand that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to stroke these back just a little bit here and I'm going to take my handy dandy patented Norvice hackle guard. I'm going to slide it up over the tube of the bobbin. I'm going to slide it up the thread. I'm going to slide it right onto the fly over top of the hackle. And what that does is that will fold all of my hackle back, keeps everything towards the back of the fly, and then it exposes the eye of the hook so that I can finish wrapping a nice clean head on there. And then I'll go to my whip finisher. Tighten that up. Now remember to slide your patented handy dandy Norvice hackle guard back down off of the fly and onto your bobbin tube. Now we'll clip this off. Hang it on the cradle. And there you go. So that's what we call the demo fly. It's actually a, a, a wet fly that, that would for sure catch trout anywhere in the uh, in the country. But We've taken three disciplines that we do in the world of fly tying and especially in the world of trout fishing all the time, dubbing, hackle, and hurl. I've showed you a way to do it that is faster. I've showed you a way to do it that is more durable, in my opinion, and I've tied a fly that is going to last considerably longer than a standard tight fly. And it all comes from the spinning function of the Norvice. So check us out on, on, the, uh, on the website, www dot nor hyphen vice dot com. Thank you.